Here we're given this expression and we're asked to write it in this form. So we need to combine a cosine and a sine both into a single cosine. So we do this by first expanding cosine theta plus alpha. So using the cosine sum of angles rule, we can say cosine theta plus alpha equals cosine theta cosine alpha minus sine theta sine alpha. And here they have this coefficient r, so we can add that. So r multiplied by that will be r multiplied by both. And what we're given is 5 cosine theta minus 12 sine theta. So we can write that as our target. So what we want is the same equals to 5 cosine theta minus 12 sine theta. So the trick here is to recognize that this cosine is the same as this cosine and this sine corresponds to this sine, meaning that r multiplied by cosine alpha is equal to 5 and r multiplied by sine alpha is equal to 12. So that gives you two equations. Oh, I'm going to start with this one. r sine alpha equals 12 and then r cosine alpha equals 5. So if that's equation 1 and that's equation one, 2, if you divide equation 1 by equation 2, you end up with um, r sine alpha over r cosine alpha equals 12 over 5. And the r's cancel out. And sine over cosine gives you tan. So you can write this as tan alpha equals 12 over 5, or alpha is the inverse tangent of 12 over 5. Now, in the question, they said they want the answer in degrees. So make sure your calculator is in degrees. Inverse tan of 12 over 5 is 67.4. Okay, so that's the first thing they wanted. They wanted alpha, and we have found alpha. We now need to find r, and you can do that either by substituting alpha into either of these two equations or simply um, by um, looking at these coefficients. So r is the square root of 12 squared plus 5 squared. So that gives you 13. So now we know r and alpha, we can now write the final answer as 13 cosine theta plus 67.4. So this is the final answer. They said express this in this form. Once you found r and you found alpha, you then insert these numbers here and here and that is your final 
expression. The question goes on to say, solve this. Um, and it says, hence, so that suggests we should use what we just found. And that is really helpful because what they want us to solve isn't easy. It's difficult to solve anything where you have sine and cosine together. So if we recognize that this is the same as what we just found, we can equate this to four and it will then be much easier. So before we take the cosine inverse, we can divide by 13. And then we can say theta plus 67 point four equals cosine inverse four over 13. Making sure your calculator is in radians, that gives you 72.1 degrees. So that's your first value for theta. Your second value will be 360 minus, um, or, or we should say, because we're still dealing with theta plus 67.4. So we'll say theta 2 plus 67.4 is 360 minus 72.1 degrees. And that will give you 287.9. Now, once you've found theta plus 67.4, you need to subtract 67.4 from both of these. So we'd say theta 1 equals 72.1 minus 67.4. That will give you 4.7. And theta 2 equals 287.9 minus 67.4, which is 220.5. So these are your two solutions. And they said they wanted the solutions between 0 and 360. So we've done that. The final part says state the maximum and minimum values of this. Now this is the same as that, so therefore it's the same as that. And the minimum and maximum for this will be plus and minus r, because it's a cosine. So we have a, a cosine that looks like this, and the maximum value will be r, and the minimum value will be minus r. So we can simply say maximum 13, minimum minus 13. Just check if the, there's any change to this. So it's this is exactly the same as that. So you could say the maximum is 13 and the minimum is minus 13. So that is your final answer.